423? This is the third lot. Okay, I. Honeymoon, perhaps. Honeymoon. This senior is much too busy. Come in. Uh, so that the ordinary shareholders may for once have the opportunity of participating in whatever profits may accrue from the development of this property. Oh, yes, put it down there, will you? Thank you. Now, let me see. The reserve fund of 1500000 and the uh, number two deficiency fund of 800000 uh, No, no, Miss Keats, uh, 900000 uh, will be sufficient for the time. Gracias, senor. Oh, yes, that'll be all. Thank you very much. Gracias, senor. Not at all. You did say you wouldn't have a cup, didn't you, dear? I think I can keep awake without black coffee. Thank you very much. Oh, good. Uh, I'm sorry about having all this work to do. Dad was exactly the same way during his lifetime. In fact, it's a marvel you're here at all. That's right. Now, uh, where were we? Uh, Miss Keats. The ordinary shareholder, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, yes, the ordinary shareholder. Uh, due to President Lozance's flight from the country with the national assets, there has been very little in the way of dividends to distribute. Now, however, we feel that we're in a position uh, to make a gesture. A dash, not necessarily an extravagant gesture. Dash? Dash, uh, towards those many small stockholders who have for so long, metaphorically, of course, carried us on their backs. On their backs. Uh, their backs. <laughs> their backs. <laughs> Something amusing you, darling? No, only the idea of your being carried along on a lot of small backs, Tom. I was speaking metaphorically, my dear. That's what I largely complain about. You're so metaphorical in everything. Yes, but we must pursue a more conservative policy. We must think of the small investor. You think so much of the small investor, it's a pity you didn't marry it. I am preparing my speech for the board meeting, my pet. There'll be no time after we get in. There's never any time for anything. We've had six weeks in the Sierras, and when you haven't been on the long-distance telephone, you've been dictating speeches, letters, reports. Aren't you ever going to stop? Ah, uh, that's the penalty of being important. I've got to carry on where Dad left off. Now, uh, with regard to that new Santa Rosa dredging plant, uh, we have made an accurate check. Accurate check? Accurate check. Accurate check. Accurate check. Accurate check. Accurate check. Miss Keats, I want five minutes with Baron Redburn before the president arrives. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Pleasant journey, I hope. Your train was ten minutes late. Uh, nine and a half minutes, Dillfellow. Pardon me, madam. Ten minutes. Don't argue with Dillfellow, honey. He's always right. That's why he's my general manager. The board meeting is already in the library, sir, waiting for you. Very Shall good. I be seeing you again before this evening? Yes, of course, darling. I'm going to be here all day. Oh. That means I shall not be seeing you again before this evening. That's right. Any word from the Baron? He's accepted our invitation for tonight, sir. Oh, good. That ought to impress the President. I understand he needs a lot of impressing, too. Everything else all right? Naturally, sir. All arrangements for the reception are complete. Good. Lady Margaret is... Lady Margaret? Is she still here? I thought she was leaving four days ago. She was, sir, but owing to unforeseen circumstances... Circumstances, I know. She's the greatest foreseer of unforeseen circumstances I've ever known. Isn't that woman ever going home? You know, she hates her home since her last husband died. I don't know why. He was never there. Morning, gentlemen. But there were the evenings, I suppose. Oh, yes, there were the evenings. That's when we really enjoyed ourselves. At least Charles did. Charles, don't stop. Go on, tell me. Charles simply loves his bridge. Especially when he has a president to play with. Give him a president and he's happy. Well, all right. Give him a president. It's a very simple problem, honey. It's merely a battle between you and your husband's business. You hold all the aces, but you don't know how to play them. Why not take a few lessons from me? No, it's no use. I've done everything I possibly can to please him, even to entertaining his stuffy friends, but no. He's just picking up where his dad left off. What's wrong with that? His dad died at 78, if you get what I mean.
Ever tried annoying him? You can't annoy Charles. Ever tried being extravagant? <laughs> I am extravagant. He doesn't even notice it. Then be more extravagant. For instance, the Peterville Diamond. The what? Why, don't be crazy, Margaret. The Peterville Diamond isn't for sale. Oh, yes, it is. Louis of the Avenida Ria's got it. It's for sale, all right. But Charles would have a fit. But still, it would be marvelous. I mean, no. Charles would never buy it. Look, Terry, you've just simply got to get this ring. If he doesn't buy it, then someone else must. That'll make him sit up. Anyway, supposing Charles does buy the ring, what do you get out of it? Nothing, darling. I'm only doing it to help you. My usual 10%, of course. No, he'd never go for the Peterville Diamond. He'd divorce me first. Of course, if you haven't got the nerve to ask him. Now, as you well know, this is a government concession. But I have no doubt that after meeting the new president tonight, that the boundary will run somewhere from the inkstand to, uh, right to the cigarette box. Yes? Can I talk to you, my sweet? Yes. You can talk to me all the time, senora. <laughs> well, what is it? Oh, I regret. It's for you, senor. Oh, heck. Why, darling. Oh, it's you, dear. Well, yes, Charles, of course it is. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't talk to you now. I'm very busy. Oh, why not, Charles? I've got something to tell you. Well, you'll have to tell me later. Oh, Charles. I'm in a board meeting. Goodbye. He's in a board meeting. Well, it can't last forever. Neither can my patience. I'm sick of being put onto the agenda under the heading of other business. You're quite right. Charles is due for a lesson. I'll tell you what to do. I tried it on Sebastian once and it worked. <laughs> Uh, where is Mr. Mortimer? Uh, still at the board meeting. Uh, it'll be some time. They haven't got past the main sewage yet. Um, he will be busy all the afternoon, won't he? Indubitably. Oh, thank you. Adrian? Hello, darling. Yes, just got back. Why, of course I've missed you, dear. What, Charles? Oh, don't be so silly. He never asks questions. No, I'm not a wife. I'm just a frozen asset. Darling, how thrilling. No, you mustn't. Now, I wouldn't dream of allowing you to spend all that money. Oh, well, I can't go on saying no, can I? All right, then, when? Louis, Avenue de Rio at five o'clock. All right, darling. It's a date. <laughs> understand Terry preferring another man and not having the courage to tell me. A uh, woman is a perpetual paradox. How do you know? I've, I've read. Well, I'll bet she doesn't come. She's already 30 seconds late. This is Mortimer you are expecting. This way, please. Monsieur Louis will be with us in just one minute. You sit down, please. That is right. I don't complain. That is exactly right. Now, the immediate problem, sir, is whether the gentleman has already arrived or whether he is about to arrive. If we enter the shop too soon, it may be premature. If, on the other hand, we leave it too late, maybe too late. Brilliant. Oh, there you are, Terry. 
Of Mrs. Mortimer. Lady Margaret informs me you are interested in the Peterville diamond. Yes, most interested. Oh. Not a sign of him. Hmm? Not a single sign. He doesn't care if I have half a dozen lovers. Is it not magnificent? Look, Meda. Yes. It's wonderful. What millions of people would do for that. Would do. They have. More than a dozen people have served sentences in jail for it, madame. Oh, really? How interesting. Madame's husband is late. Well, perhaps he is a busy man. You've no idea how busy he is. There he is. He's just arrived. He's kissing her hand. Let me see. George is one of my most trusted servants. It was he who purchased the ring from the Countess. Really? That is all, George. You may go now. Au revoir, mesdames. Et messieurs. Pardon, monsieur. Uh, not at all. Why, Charles? Whatever are you doing here? Oh, I suppose I just kind of dropped in. Oh, did you know I was here? Oh, no, of course not. You didn't? Oh. Well, I wasn't certain about it. You see, there was a bit of doubt about it. Oh, I see. You don't think I followed you, do you? Didn't you? Weren't you just a little bit suspicious? Suspicious? Oh, darling, don't be so utterly ridiculous. You seem very certain, Charles. Supposing I came here to meet a man who wanted to buy me a present. A rather expensive present, Charles. The Peterville Diamond, in fact. The Peterville Diamond? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. If you knew somebody liked me enough to do that, what would you do? Well, naturally, darling, I'd break his neck. Oh? Then you were just a little bit jealous, weren't you? You jealous? Oh, don't be silly, dear. I'm not a child. Then why are you here? Well, I, um, I remembered that your birthday is next month. The month after next. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, how could you be such a beast? Oh, I can't remember everything. No, it doesn't matter. Why don't you buy her the ring? Sure, dozens of them. Mr. Mortimer, care to examine the ring? Okay. Well, it looks all right to me. Is it real? Is it real? Oh, mon dieu. Well, I'm afraid this isn't my line of country. You see, I deal in machinery, things that work. This works too, Charles. You'd be surprised. I'll bet. All right, how much? Well, you know where I can write a check? Mm -hmm. Certainly, sir. This way, please. He's treating me like a spoiled baby. He's not even jealous. I'm going. Oh, stick around, if only for the sake of my commission. Don't you realize Charles is only buying you this ring because he loves you? He's buying it because writing a check is less of a nuisance than making love. Oh, I wish I could do something to shock him. Five twenty-five, correct? Correct, sir. here some time ago. I'd like to buy another. Exactly like that? Uh, exactly, if possible. Of course, we have a variety of scent sprays. Gold, platinum, wrought silver. Well, if possible, I would like to match this. But you might show me what you have. Uh, if you'll kindly take a seat, sir, I'll bring some to you. Uh, just a moment. I realize it must be quite near your closing time. Perhaps you could take me to where they are. Thank you, sir. This way, please. Now, this is a fine piece of work, hand wrought in gold. Oh, no, I don't think it'll suit the kind of perfume. Uh, this is rather an unusual perfume. Uh, don't you think so? What? A big one? <sighs> wow.
uh, I don't want to alarm the other people in the shop, but I think your colleague has fainted. Fainted, monsieur? Yes, I'm afraid so. I think you'd better come along and see what you can do. Oh, but certainly, monsieur. I did what I could to him, uh, for him. But didn't he complain of anything, sir? Uh, not a thing. But he didn't have time. Most extraordinary, you know. I just showed him my scent spray like this, gave him a, a whiff of perfume, like this, and he... <laughs> and he... just... passed out. A moment. Oh, thanks very much. Don't mention it. Uh, I take it you're not here for the purpose of robbing this establishment? Good gracious, no. Whatever next? Oh, splendid. I hate sharing profits. Yes, I, I'm sure you do. Most unsatisfactory. Evidently a businessman. Yeah. More or less. And how is business? Pretty fair. Pretty fair. Well, rather at a standstill at the moment, I expect. Well, held up, one might say. Well, one might say we're rather held up. <laughs> Good evening. Who are you? I'm Joseph. Well, what do you think you're doing? Shutting up shop, sir. Thank you, Joseph. I'll take over from here. Now back up to that counter, all of you. And you. Come on, get by that counter. Come on, Louis. Your insurance in order? That is none of your business. That means it must be in order, otherwise you'd be squawking like a stuck pig. I can't tell you how much I regret this inconvenience. Oh, please, don't mention it. Oh, that's extremely charming of you. Kindly talk to me and not my wife. Your wife? Congratulations. How did you do it? Oh, are you? No, I'm nervous. You, sir, move over here. All right, put it down. Now step over to that panel and open it. Yes, that's the one. The fourth drawer from the top. There's nothing in it. Uh, thank you, Louis, but I'll still take a look. Uh, carry on, Mr... Um, the name is Dillfellow. Uh, come along, Louis. You must be anxious to show us your treasures. I refuse. Afraid there's a cuckoo in the nest? A cuckoo? Certainly not. Uh, let me have those cases over here. Here, André. Your assistants must be laying down on the job. Uh, kindly open those cases. Light the ring before he sees it. He's got nerve enough for anything. Yes, that's what I admire. But charming. You like it? I'll take it. Exquisite. You like it? I'll take it. Ah, oh, that's very disappointing, Louis. Uh, you see what I mean, madam? The matching is only second rate. Yes, I know, but the general effect is delightful. You think so? Then I'll take it. Uh, thank you. Uh, empty that and we'll put this stuff in there. I refuse. Refuse? Well, I protest. Quickly! Thank you. It's not bad, it's not good. Uh, what have you got in there? That's uh, rather beautiful. Pack them in there. Please do not take these jewels. Take anything else you like in the shop, but not these, please. I'm sorry, Louis. I know what I want and I must have it. 
We are now going to the strong room. It's a waste of time. We shall see. We are all going to the strong room and Louis will lead the way. We are all going. I refuse. I congratulate you on the charming way you refuse. But unfortunately, I must insist. Uh, please. Joseph. Open up the treasure house, Louis. What can I do? Evidently very little. I shall see the chief of police about this. And now will you please step inside? Pity we can't spare the time to thoroughly investigate this place. However, I happen to know there's little of value here. The Rockstein emeralds, the Bourbon tiara, that much pawned piece of vulgarity, the Peterville. Now there is something worthwhile. The Peterville Diamond. Of course. That's why you're all here. But enchanting. Uh, do you mind stepping just outside? Keep inside. I will. I think you will. Why, you swine. Business before pleasure and pearls before swine. Thank you. You can't leave us here. Oh, Sir Fritos. Goodbye and thank you very much. I'll fix you. This is all highly regular. You know, it'd be so much pleasanter if you just hand me the pitiful diamond in the friendliest fashion. Why pleasanter? Because I must have it. But haven't you stolen enough as it is? You ought to be able to live in comfort for years. But not in luxury. No, the consideration is not financial. No? No. You see, I take a pride in my work. And to overlook the Peterville diamond, well, I'd never forgive myself. You're being very difficult. It's scarcely kind. Kind? Oh, how quaint. Why should I be kind? Well, I had a feeling you were on my side. I must have been wrong. My husband has just bought me this ring, and naturally, I don't want to lose it. And may I ask if the attachment is sentimental or otherwise? Yes, you may ask. But you must realize that I can't leave this place without the Peterville diamond. I'd be failing as a professional... Thief? Uh, couldn't we make it rather the word as a richer tone? Yes, perhaps so. On the whole, I think I like it better. There she is outside with that crook and the president coming. A fine thing. The president? Oh, please don't tell him anything about this robbery, Mr. Mortimer. I beg of you. And why not? Why not? The jewels were the property of the state. I was commissioned to sell them. And if they are not recovered, I shall be shot. I can't struggle with you. That would be crude. I can't leave the diamond. That would be unprofessional. I can't expect you to give it to me. That would be foolish. I could, of course, use this gun. Don't be absurd. But it's the only logical thing to do. It fulfills every obligation. It saves your pride and proves your courage. It justifies my existence as a robber. Because only a man who's prepared to make good his bluff would go around committing robbery under arms. I'm afraid it has to be done. If you think you can scare me into giving you this ring, you're mistaken. I know you're bluffing. And I warn you, as I lay your lifeless form on that couch, I shall give you a farewell kiss. You wouldn't dare. I did warn you. No, stop. I'll... <laughs> seconds more. You know what to do. Perfectly, sir. You will have just one minute start. There'll be no mistakes because we never make mistakes, do we, Joseph? No, sir. Fernandez will be waiting at the corner. He'll hand you the briefcase and you'll receive the money. Everything clear? As daylight, sir.
Uh, excuse me. Uh, a light, senor. Certainly. Hey. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> about this might have got lost what happened some cop slugged fernandez what and i slugged the cop holy smoke let's get home You are always unconscious. Yes, Open this gate. Open it. Where's my wife? Over there, sir. No one touches him if he doesn't call the police. Terry. Terry, are you all right? Oh, hello, Charles, darling. What fun we've been having. What happened? Oh, how on earth can I remember before I'm properly awake? You must give me time. But you were alone with him. Yes, Charles. Well, what happened? Don't rush her, Charles. Give her time to think. She shouldn't need time to think about a thing like this. Terry. Terry, do try and help. I'm trying to help, Charles. Please don't be so unreasonable. But you were alone with that thief. Robert. Well, what's the difference? A world of difference. Well, anyway, you were alone with him. Where were the two assistants? I don't know. Then you were alone. Oh, don't keep on saying you were alone. Terry, did he? Was he unpleasant? Not at all. On the contrary. Oh. Embarrassingly frank, to say the least of it. You might have screamed for help, if only for the sake of appearances. He didn't seem to need any help. Why, was there a struggle? Was there a struggle? Ha, ha. Oh, you don't seem to realize how helpless I was. Yes, I'm just beginning to. Did you give him that ring? Oh, I suppose I must have. Well, don't you know? No. Oh, rubbish. Something swept me right off my feet. And I'm not back to earth yet. Yes, I can see that. You're behaving like someone who's been hypnotized. Could that have been it? <clears throat> Fascinating thought. And what a pity it's all over. I see it all, sir. The thief and this fellow, Adrian. You know, the, the man who she spoke to on the telephone. One and the same. Don't be stupid. Don't be such an idiot, Terry. Charles has done nothing to deserve this. Anybody who has done nothing as regularly as Charles deserves all he gets. Didn't you say he ought to be shocked? Well, yes, I did, but fine. He's shocked. The police are fighting here. Here, get those doors open. Yes. The police? That means more delay. I tell you, I'm not going to wait here for the police. No, we're not. And I resent being brought here. I've got a most important engagement at my house. The president is calling. I'm quite aware of the president's movement, Senior Mortimer. That's part of my job. This is another part. Now, please, let's take one thing at a time. But we've told you all we know. We agree Except that... for the description of the wanted man. Sonora Mortimer doesn't agree with anyone. Sonora Mortimer is mistaken. Why should she be? She has her own powers of observation. You still stick to your description of this man, senor? 
Absolutely. He was tall, slender, well-dressed. He was not. He was short, middle-aged, and fat. Oh, he was nothing of the kind. Oh, yes, he was, and you know it. He also had a beard. Very well. He was short, middle-aged, and fat. And with an extremely common manner. Baloney, he was young and good-looking. And you know it. Surely you're not jealous. Oh, will somebody help this woman to remember? Signora, please, think again. You had an equal chance to observe him. An equal chance? She had a better chance. They were alone together. Listen, honey, if you're going to stick to this story, we'll be here all night. All right, that's fine. Let's be here all night. You do realize you may be helping this man to escape, Signora? Oh, quite. He must not escape. Think of me. If the state jewels are not recovered, I should be ruined for the rest of my life. He will not escape. Why not? Our chief does not allow criminals to escape. Chief, why not compromise? Accept both descriptions and arrest everybody who fits them. But, Signora, that's impossible. I can't arrest every man in the city. I don't get it. I just don't get it. You've been in a strange mood all day. Have I? I wonder why. Signora, do you think you'd recognize this man if you saw him again? Of course. Then that settles everything. Two men have been arrested. They're outside now. Oh. Uh, have them brought in, will you? Yes, sir. Well, Signora, now which of these men is the criminal? <laughs> Neither of them. Well, for once, I agree with you. These crooks look like crooks. Our crooks didn't. Didn't what? Look like crooks. Gosh darn it, I'm a cop myself. Look. Bankers Protection Bureau. Yeah, that's right. My toy's the name. Well, why didn't somebody tell me you were from the bank? And who's this man, your prisoner? M. Fernandez. He's a receiver wanted in 15 states. I caught him with a stolen jewel from Louis. That's splendid. You'll be wasting everybody's time. This gentleman's made a brilliant arrest. Take those off. Ladies and gentlemen, I need not detain you any longer. I should think not. I apologize. Oh, uh, Signora, uh, I hope your memory improves. Thanks very much. Come on, we'll be late. We'll never make it. Thanks very much. Well, where is it? Where's what? The stolen jewelry. I haven't got it. What do you mean you haven't got it? You said you had. Well, it's like this, Chief. This guy gets it from some other guy, so I slugs him and gets it. Then some other guy slugs me and he gets it. Well, See? where is it now? In a briefcase. Well, Joseph, that was one of our neatest jobs. I got back to the party, established an alibi, and nobody even noticed I'd been away. Uh, money? Yes. I, uh... Splendid. Everything according to plan. Well, uh, not quite, sir. What do you mean? Well... What happened? Fernandez got pinched. Oh. So having both the goods and the cash, don't you think we ought to scram, sir? Certainly not. And don't say scram, Joseph. It's old-fashioned. Yes, but Fernandez might talk. No, he won't talk. They haven't got a shred of evidence against him. We've got that and we've got the money, too. Now, I'll tell you what they will do. They'll let him go in the hopes that he'll lead them to us. Childish. You mean, then, that you won't, uh, scram? Yes, sir. Certainly not. Why should we? We've got nothing to worry about. They've got nothing on us. I'm established as the Baron. I'm on a business trip for Europe, and tonight I meet the President. You mean you're going through with that? Through with it, of course I am. After tonight, we'll know where half the jewelry in the country spends its spare time. And we can pick it up in ours. Yes, what are we going to do with that stuff? Well, I could unpack the trunk with the false bottoms, sir. Yeah, that's exactly where some dumb cop would look for it. No, I tell you what we'll do. We won't hide it. No. No, we'll just... Just put it down over here. But leave it on the desk, sir. Exactly. On the principle that no one ever sees what's under their noses. Now, would you, uh, would you say that was under my nose? Very much so, sir. Splendid. Then let's forget it. I'm going to. In fact, I'm going to bath and change. How's the, um, uh, gardenia situation, all right? Well, I'm afraid it isn't, sir. Oh, you better slip out and get some. Uh, must look our best for the president. Quite, right, sir. I had to cancel several of your appointments, Mr. Mortimer. You see, you never let me know where you were. Didn't I fancy that? Well, now. where were you? In jail. Now you're satisfied? Yes, Mr. Mortimer. And don't gape at me. Go and do something, anything. Lay out my clothes. The president will be here and we'll only be half-dressed. Maybe you like us better that way. And you girls don't take an hour to get ready, either. It only takes me ten minutes. 
Let's have things done my way for a change. Oh, get out. Well, at least you've broken his apathy. Yes, your plan worked. I haven't had such a thrilling day for ages. Yes, too thrilling. <laughs> of a guy do you find yourself looking for? I find myself looking for a little guy with a raft of gardenias. Gardenias? Uh, they would not be magnolia. No, well, they wouldn't be black-eyed Susans, neither. Ah, I said gardenias and you can't unsell me. Uh, everybody to his taste. What was that? Oh, thank you, Joseph. Do you happen to know where I put my second best passport? Uh, yes, sir, in the briefcase, in the car, with the rest of the other papers. Ah, oh, thank you. Hey, you. You seen a guy with gardenias? A whole flock of them? You mean in the elevator? I mean anywhere at all. Only Senor Joseph. Oh, now we're getting places. Senor Joseph. Who and what is Senor Joseph? He does for the bottom. No kidding. Mm, well, buddy, just waft me up to him. I've got a notion I'm gonna do for him. Well, what did you think of her? You mean the lady with the ring, sir? Who else? Be careful, sir. You know what always happens. When there's a very attractive lady? Yes, we both know what always happens, don't we, Joseph? Highly dangerous, sir, if I may say so. Most highly entertaining things are highly dangerous, Joseph. My motto is never mix business and pleasure, yeah, sir. That's why you don't have any fun. Now, I insist on mixing business with pleasure on all possible occasions. And you know, something tells me that that young woman has a great many possible occasions. Quite possibly, sir. We're not expecting visitors, are we? No, sir. You don't think... Now, how many times have I told you not to meet trouble halfway? I know, sir, but this has come all the way to meet us. Oh, it's probably somebody selling something. Uh, go and see who it is. Very good, sir. Oh, so you try and trip me, eh? Yeah, you're that guy, all right. Where are them gardenias? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, don't you? Get a load of this. You know what that is? Who is this gentleman, Joseph? You can skip the cracks. I really don't know, sir. I think the gentleman wants some gardenias. Gardenias, nothing. I'm looking for a briefcase. Uh, this is not a lost property office, you know. No, and it's not a jeweler's, neither. Yes, that's a masterly observation. Listen, I see this guy pass a briefcase to a certain mug. So I cops up the mug, but get slugged, see? The next time I'm taking notice, the briefcase is gone, and I figure that this cluck knows where it is. And, uh, uh, do you know where it is, Cluck? Uh, Joseph? <laughs> search me, sir. You bet I'm gonna search. I'm gonna search the whole joint. Ah, oh, splendid. Come along tomorrow and we'll search together. Tomorrow, not and I'm searching now. Well, I was just going out. Go ahead, I can search without you. Me and Gardenia here. All right. We'll search together. Fine. Fine. We'll start right here. Briefcase. Briefcase. Now, where in the heck would they hide a briefcase? Uh, under the bed. Don't ah. fidget with that paper. Too obvious. In the icebox. Listen. You don't have to stick around. My business is with this squirt. Uh, yes, but this squirt may have business with me. One must think of these things. Sure, sure. Think all you want it. That gosh darn briefcase is someplace in this joint. I can just smell it. It's all your fault that we're in this mess. Snooping around after bits of scandal like an old woman. Our five sisters were women. We could have kept in the clear. We could, but not Mrs. Botterby. Hey, that's right. She'd have been in it in any case. Why was she there at all? Ah, why indeed? Uh, the 
Listen, there's something I want to know. Really, Charles? What is it? Who's Adrian? Adrian? Oh, Adrian. Now, you're not going to try and deny there is an Adrian. Deny it? Well, there must be thousands of them. I mean the guy you telephoned to this morning. Have you been spying on me? Now, listen here. You pick a fine time to try and give me the runaround. Here we are, entertaining the president and the most important foreign visitor coming to our house, Baron Redburn. I think I'll have the blue one thing. And you pick a time like this to try playing me up. Uh, if you'd like a drink, help yourself. You can't bribe me. Well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Panther. You trying to poison me? Old oh, stuff. What's in here? Uh, my bedroom. High tone kind of junk. <laughs> Certainly is. Uh, make yourself at home. Uh, cigarette? You mugs is trying awful hard. Hey! You with the briefcase! I remember this. A technical assault. Out of that dumb cop I saw. Something gone wrong. Oh, nothing, Joseph. Can't take care of. You know the address. Yes, sir. And if you hadn't listened to gossip, you wouldn't have got mixed up in it. You wouldn't even have been there, would you? Don't I will come and do this tie. That's not the point. I've got to look after my interests. What did you have to start this for? Uh, I consider it my duty, sir. And is it Mr. Dillfellow's duty to go eavesdropping about all over the place? It certainly is not. Why don't you attend to your business? I'm attending to your business, sir. That is my business. Well, in future, make my business your business. And stop dithering. I'll do it myself. I suppose you realize we're going to get a lot of publicity when this crook is arrested. Oh, are we? Well, won't that be good for business? Not this kind of publicity. Absolutely fatal. With these government concessions. And the new president. And the state jewels missing. And our being present at the robbery. And not doing anything to prevent it. And the police more than suspicious of one of us. And my wife, of all people. The whole thing stinks. Precisely. Who asked you to muscle in? I beg your pardon. Go on down and talk to the guests. What shall I say? Say anything you like, but get going. <laughs> Well, I've got you red-handed, yes. That's right, give me this. What is this, a stick-up? You know darn well what it is. It's a pinch, buddy, with the goods right on you. Goods? What goods? Don't give me that. You've got the state rocks right here in this vanity bag, and I'm taking you to the cooler. Come now, on. Just a minute, just a minute. Are you quite as dumb as you look? Certainly not. Well, then, supposing you check up on these rocks or whatever you call them before you make a complete monkey of yourself. Say, what are you trying to sell me, Stan, there? Any fancy stuff and I'll slug you. Where are them rocks? 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 I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, don't you? Well, why did you run when I chased you? I thought you were an escaped lunatic. No, oh, you did, did you? Yes, now I'm sure of it. Oh, all right, smart guy. On your way. Thank you. And watch your step. Oh. You know what 
I can understand is all this happening so suddenly. Adrian and this crook guy at Louis certainly went for him in a big way. Did I? He wouldn't be Adrian by any chance. No, no, I couldn't imagine you signing up with a crook. You know, Terry, if you were really interested in someone else, I'd try and understand. Would you? Sure. You pass me up, will you? I'm not a conceited man, really. I'm just trying to do things the way Dad wanted. Can't expect you to feel the same way about it, of course. But I couldn't stand for a scandal. I must consider my associates. And your small investors? Certainly. This is not only another language, it's another world. If anybody had told me I was marrying a commercial organization, I should have bought myself a set of account books and died an old maid. Well, what's the matter with you now? Oh, nothing, nothing. And now please go before we start a trade depression. And look at your tie. Oh, never mind my tie. Who should I say, sir? The Baron Redburn. The Baron Redburn. I'm very sorry to be so late coming down. Business, you know. The Baron Redburn, sir. Hey, excuse me. Who did you say? The Baron Redburn, sir. Well, Mr. Mortimer, this is a very fortunate meeting, and one to which I've been looking forward for a long time. Yes, come in here. What the devil are you doing here? I beg your pardon. You have the effrontery to come here after what happened this afternoon. I don't think I understand. You are Mr. Mortimer, are you not? Oh, that's a laugh. And I am the Baron Redburn. I understood I was to meet the President here this evening. The Baron? The... Who? Really, I'm not used to this sort of reception, Mr. Mortimer. Uh, that is, if you are Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> now listen, let's get this straight. You're trying to tell me that you're Baron Redburn when all the time I know you're the fellow who robbed Louis' shop this afternoon? Really, I'm not accustomed to being insulted, Mr. Mortimer. But if you tell me that your doctor's prescribed arrest or that you're suffering from delusions, I shall understand perfectly and I shall leave immediately. No, no, don't go. I mean, do stay. Uh, perhaps a good night's nice rest will find you better. No, there's nothing wrong with me. A heavy day, perhaps. Well, if there's any doubt as to my identity, I have a copy of a letter from my solicitor in which he suggests that we compare the signature of whoever presents himself as the Baron Redburn with that on the letter. I suggest that we perform that experiment now. Uh, yes. Identical. I scarcely know what to say. Then don't say it. But the likeness is fantastic. Of course, the voice is a little lighter, I think. And, and now that I look at you closely, you're not nearly as heavily built as the robber. Oh, that's very gratifying. And he was anything but a gentleman. Ah, now you're flattering me. No, no, I, I suppose it's the heavy grueling by the police this afternoon. It's, it's rather got my nerves on edge. I imagine everybody I see to look like the robber. Oh, please don't say another word. I understand your position perfectly. And if today has been unpleasant, let us hope the pleasures of this evening will make up for it. And uh, now, as we have a little time to spare, don't you think it'd be advisable to check my identity more thoroughly? Uh, somehow, I think that the contents of this case will prove the matter beyond all doubt. <sighs> that's very unfortunate. So that's it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Though how it could have happened, I... Uh, well, will you telephone to the police or shall I? No, I will. No. No, I can't do that. I can't have the police here. Yes, I wondered how long it would take you to realize that. Without me, your little party to the president would be a great success, wouldn't it? 
No Baron, no lovely little contract for Mr. Mortimer. I don't see that. Oh, yes, you do. If I didn't appear, the president would be disappointed and call the whole thing off. But who is the real Baron Redburn? I am. Don't give me that. Believe it or not, I am the only Baron Redburn. Oh. Everybody told me you were a big businessman. Why, nobody said anything about you being a... a Look. Yes, and I've been depending on you. Go on depending. I'm not fussy. I'd stoop to anything, even big business. Why, you cheap, chiseling gangster. Oh, Mr. Mortimer. Still, fellow, I'd like you to meet the Baron Redburn. The ba then the Baron and the... Crook are one and the same. But the jewels? Under his arm. This is splendid, if I may say so. Huh? This is not so splendid, if I may say so. With the president arriving at any moment, we're in a spot. How right you are. You need me, and I need you. This is the last place the police will expect to find me, so I tell you what I'll do. In exchange for a hideout, I'll see you through with the president. How about it? Well, what can we do? I need to say this goes against my grain. Who cares about your grain? But no dirty work, mind. Mr. Mortimer, what a suggestion. Come on. Charles. Hello, Rosita. Oh, Senor Senora Alcazar. Delighted. Senor Senora Milaflores. Uh, Baron Redburn. Delighted. Uh, come along, Baron. Well, really, this is incredible. We didn't expect you again so soon. But this is the Baron Redburn, darling. Oh, the European business giant. I've heard my husband dictating so much about you. I suppose collecting is one of your hobbies. <laughs> one of them. I have others. You must tell us about them. I will. You, at least, would understand. <laughs> Another crack like that and the deal's off. Suit yourself. Now, Charles, you mustn't lose your sense of humor, you know. No, something tells me he's going to need it. Colonel and Senorita Gonzalez. Captain Montes. This is indeed an unexpected pleasure, Chief. No doubt, but don't let it disturb you. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, we're delighted to have you here. Aren't we, dear? Why, yes, of course. We should all feel much safer now. Uh, naturally. You know Lady Margaret. Uh, may I present Baron Redburn? Baron, this is Colonel Gonzalez, the Chief of Police. Uh, uh, my daughter, Captain Montes. Charmed. I trust you are not thinking of combining business with pleasure. Well, one never knows, Baron. I hope you're none the worse for this afternoon's experience, Signora. Uh, not in the least. Uh, have you found the jewel thief yet? No, not yet. But we're on his track. Uh, all exits in the city are being watched, so he cannot escape. Uh, and um, he may not turn out to be, as you described him, Signora, uh, short, fat, and common. Uh, but, Chief, now that I stop to think of it, he was a bit short. Oh. And fat? Uh, well, fattish. But not exactly common. Oh, no, not common. No, stealing diamonds, he couldn't be common. Well, not like stealing motor cars. Oh, of course not, dear. No, circumstances alter things. And uh, memories, if I may say so. Excellency, the President. Senor Mortimer? I'm greatly honored, Your Excellency. May I present my wife? Your Excellency. The honor is mine. And your friend, Senor? Quite. Uh, this is Lady Margaret, Senorita Gonzalez, and of course, Colonel Gonzalez. <coughs> oh, yes, Baron Redburn. I've so much been looking forward to this meeting, Baron. No more than I have, sir. I trust that uh, Senor Mortimer was not exaggerating when he wrote saying that he decided to make you his partner. I have no objection, sir. Uh, provided, of course, I can satisfy myself as to the financial integrity of Mr. Mortimer. Uh, well, I understand your attitude, Baron. And this is our Mr. Dillfellow. Delighted. Our poor country suffers so much from exploitation by unscrupulous foreigners. Too true. Colonel Gonzalez. Sir. The rumor has just reached me that this afternoon the state jewels were stolen. <clears throat> well, uh, as a matter of fact, Your Excellency, uh, there is some slight doubt as to their present whereabouts. You realize, of course, that we're depending on the sale of these jewels for our future development scheme. It was on my promise to put this into operation that I was elected president. Well, Your Excellency, every possible measure has been taken, and we hope to effect an arrest at any moment. Good. 
Excellent. Uh, may I suggest, Your Excellency, that we adjourn to the patio? The drinks are in there, and I'd like you to taste one of the Mortimer specials. Excuse me, sir. Yes? You want it on the telephone. You see what it is, Captain. Immediately, my colonel. And so far as our new development scheme is concerned, we mean business. What a charming man the Baron is. Wherever did you find him? I'm afraid we didn't find him. He found us. <laughs> Come here, Terry. I want to talk to you. I hope you're happy now that your boyfriend's arrived. Boyfriend? Oh, yes. He does seem to be making himself at home, doesn't he? Oh, he's a great little mixer. But he didn't expect to find me here tonight. Now he's in a mess. Well, I have every confidence in his ability to get out of it. I know you have. And that doesn't make me very happy. Oh, nonsense, Charles. The excitement's doing you good. You're becoming almost human. Don't be a fool, Terry. This is serious. Don't you recognize that briefcase he's carrying? It's full of the state jewels. But surely he'd never bring it here. He must be mad. No, just a bit too smart. Like all clever crooks, he's made a mistake. But supposing somebody sees them, you've introduced him. I know. That makes us accessories and we go to jail. One moment, please. Excuse me, my dear. If only we'd never gone to Louis. It's a bit too late to talk about that. Well, you must get hold of it and hide it. Oh, that's a very good idea. But how? Uh, that was headquarters on the phone. The American detective who will be arrested with Fernandez reports that the man who gave the jewels to Fernandez was the servant of Baron Redburn. Oh, this is getting interesting. Proceed, my dear Captain. The American searched this man's briefcase but found only the Baron's papers of identification. Yes, yes. Therefore, Senator Chief, it looks as though... As though the Baron has something to do with it. Well, the descriptions seem to fit. All except Mrs. Mortimer's. Exactly. Well, I wonder what's in that briefcase he's carrying. You get back to headquarters and check up on him. Immediately, my colonel. During the evening, Baron, I may ask you to be kind enough to comply with a slight formality. Oh? I don't think the Baron will be interested in formalities this evening, Colonel. That, Your Excellency, is a matter for conjecture. Oh, but I'm anxious to assist the police in any way possible. It saves so much annoyance. That's very generous of you, Baron, but you shall not be annoyed here. Your great ideas landed us in a nice mess. You're telling me I've just heard the chief of police talking to the captain. Those boys are out to do their stuff. There must be some way out of it. What do you want for the Baron? Merely a glance at the Baron's passport, Your Excellency. A, a mere formality, but one of our laws. I wouldn't dream of asking you at this moment, except that I see you have your papers with you. Indeed. Then kindly choose some more appropriate moment for your ridiculous requests. Tonight, the Baron's time is fully occupied. Announce dinner at once. But uh, dinner won't be ready. You for heard what I said. Minutes. Announce dinner. Very good, sir. I'll get it somehow. Leave it to me. Dinner is served. Ah. Kindly postpone your business to a more suitable occasion. Oh, but it's such a simple matter, so I really don't mind. The man's deliberately trying to provoke me. Such a charming house you have here, Signora. So peaceful and calm after the bustle of government departments. Right down? Oh, yes, so far. Better get rid of the briefcase. I beg your pardon? Please know your servants mixed up with a robbery and they'll search everyone before we leave the house. Are you certain? Yes, I'm certain. You better let me hide it. <coughs> You'll get it back. Yes, how do I know? Silly, we're not all crooks. Let's make it a business proposition. I'll take 10%. All right. It's a deal. 10%. what had happened to you. I just remembered I'd forgotten something. And I thought I'd better do it now before I forgot to do it again. My favorite motto, a stitch in time? Yes. Violet, <laughs> do it now. Admirable. 
I always say that men invent these wise sayings, but only women live up to them. Noble creatures, always busy upon some good deed or other. Preoccupied, Senor Mortman. Oh, no, not really. One should never think of business during dinner. It spoils the digestion. I quite agree with you. When anyone takes business as seriously as I do, especially this present business. Oh, I don't think we need worry. I feel sure that the Baron will have the situation well in hand. There are slips, Your Excellency, in the best laid plans of mice and men. No slip, Baron. I feel sure that you cannot rectify. Oh, that's very nice of you to say so. Do you feel that things are moving? Yes, I think I can say with all honesty that things are definitely on the move. Have you dropped something, my dear? Uh, yes, my napkin. Uh, allow me. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're not eating, Senor Mortimer. Courage. I feel sure that you can face your dinner with an easy mind. Eh, Baron? Well, I agree with His Excellency, Mortimer. There are times when things elude one, then suddenly one knows just where they are. Exactly. Can you tell me where I can find Baron Redburn? The Baron's at dinner now. Oh, dear, that's awfully annoying. I didn't see you come in, sir. Oh, not on the job, eh? Will you go and tell the Baron that his secretary's waiting for him in the library? And it's imperative that he comes at once. One. most urgent. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. and Mrs. Mortimer, uh, would you excuse me a few moments? If the matter's urgent, I suppose we must. Now, personally, I should dismiss the secretary who interrupted me at such a moment. <laughs> <laughs> distinguished gathering at the reception. Of course, I was very much younger at the time. <coughs> Mr. Dalfiddle. Uh, Dill Fellow, sir. What is it? I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, sir, but a matter of most extreme urgency has cropped up, sir. I, I'll give you the details later. It's extraordinary behavior. What are you doing here? I brought your paper, sir. You took the wrong briefcase. I realize that, you idiot. What made you switch it? Well, there's nothing else I could do, sir. Don't you realize the police might easily have followed you here? The police? <laughs> that sounds rather funny to me, sir. Ah, oh, there's nothing in here. Stuff's hidden in the house, and I know where. You lie low in here, and I'll go and get the stuff. Yes, sir. Now, have you got everything straight? Absolutely, sir. And so, I instructed the orchestra to play La Paloma. But unfortunately, she didn't like La Paloma. Senora Mortimer, don't you like La Paloma? Um, uh, oh, yes, of course, I adore it. But I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me just for one minute. The numbers seem to be diminishing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ik doe het niet principle that no one ever sees what's under their pillow. If a little man comes in, this is what he's after. Uh, may I? Thank you. And now, will you kindly go? Oh, no, not immediately. But surely you must realize that Charles' future depends on those jewels being out of this house. Yes, but my future depends on being out of this house with those jewels. So? So I've arranged for those jewels to be out of this house. Yes, yes. I just can't wait to hear I... the end of the story. I can't wait. I'll be right back. This is it. These people are positively uncivilized. Salvatore, order my car. Immediately, Excellency. 67. Oh, I wonder what it would be like to exchange your confidence for my security. Oh, is it confidence to like the way a woman carries her head? Yet you must have felt very secure behind that little pistol of yours this afternoon. Just how confident were you? Would you like to know? Do you know I believe I do know? And do you mind? What the devil's going on here? How dare you come into my wife's bedroom? Now, Charles, you're making a fool of yourself. Oh, no, I'm not. For the first time in my life, I'm not making a fool of myself, and I'll talk to you later. I'm afraid you misunderstand. Well, here's something I don't want you to misunderstand. If you don't get down those stairs in two ticks, I'll tear you limb from limb. Charles! At any other time, I'd be happy to oblige. But I think a commotion now would be fatal to our plans. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. But you'll get that other time. Come on. So you're not leaving. I am, and without a regret. But if you come back to the patio, I can explain I'm sorry, everything. But I have more important business elsewhere. What is going on? I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me again, or don't, or whichever you like. What is this? It's all right, Chief. I got him this Damn. time. I'm looking through the window, and in comes this fish with the case. He looks inside and sees the diamonds, which he puts in the vault and then beats it. And this palooka tries to grab it off. But I'm one jump ahead of him, and here they are. This man tried to rob me. Your Excellency, I promised you an arrest, but instead of one, you will have two. This man, and the person known as Baron Redburn. You're raving mad. No, he's perfectly right. 
And this is just in case of accidents. You're not going to try and fool us a second time with that little scent spray. There's a time for work and a time for play. This time it's business. Joseph, lock that door. Yes, sir. Hand me that briefcase, Mr. Bill Fellow. Ah, oh, thank you. Your car, Your Excellency. Oh, His Excellency's car is waiting. Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph, persuade the chauffeur to give you his job. Very good, sir. If this is your idea of a joke... It is. It's also my idea of making a living. Mrs. Mortimer, will you step outside? Not again. Uh, yes, again, will I you? I will not. I think you will. But Charles! Listen, I stood for plenty. And you'll stand for plenty more. Goodbye, everybody, and thank you for your cooperation. Now get over to the door and keep smiling. Do you mind stepping out, Sonny? Now walk. I want that coat. After you. Pretty good, Joseph. Thank you, sir. Carry on. Listen, if this is your idea of a joke, it's going a bit too far. Will you let me out of here at once? Wouldn't it be wiser to wait until we stop? God had the insolence to take my car. He won't go very far in that. I'll arrest him personally. Where are you taking me to? Do you think you can get away with this? Well, I seem to be. Step on it, Joseph. is not consistent with our policy. This is once when our policy gets kicked right in the pants. And as for you, my friend, I'm through taking your advice. But I'm through being treated as an errand boy. No, you're not. You're just through. In that case, I resign. Step on it. Step on it. I am stepping on it. Well, this should be giving you a great deal of amusement. I suppose it should, but it doesn't. Oh, not exciting enough. Uh, faster, Joseph. That's better. You see, even the corners are throwing us together. It must be an omen. My both feet. Madam, this car may not be fast, but at least it can be depended upon. Depend it on to blow up. That is a mere matter of adjustment. I need scarcely point out that failure to recover the jewels puts an end to our plans for the future. Sure, that's fine. It'll give me more time to think about my future plans. You can make watches go like that. Like what? Shake them and they go. They're out of gas. Would you kindly not interfere, please? Well, I still think you should try shaking them. I'll get some gas. Women know nothing about motor cars. Find a point of engineering completely lost on them. Job like this requires finesse. And understanding. Or gas. Or gas. Never mind the bugs, Joseph. Carry on. The car's all right, built like a battleship. But am I supposed to be built like a battleship, too? Quicker, quicker. Just a little more gas. The president! 
I must say, I didn't realize it was going to be as simple as that. It won't be so simple when Charles catches up with us. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten about Charles. I wonder if he ever will catch up with us. I hope he does. Well, now we're off. Care what happens to your business? Listen, I only care what happens to my wife. You think I'm crazy? That right I am about her. Well, here we are. This is Amigos. Put the car out of sight and stand by. Yes, sir. What sort of a place is this? Oh, I assure you, it's quite respectable. In this way. Good evening, Baron. Good evening, Amigo. Good success, I see. Oh, no, not bad. Uh, two brandies, Amigo. Uh, serve them in there. Well, I'm hoping the brandies will put you in a better frame of mind to listen to my proposition. You've brought me all this way just to listen to a proposition. Yes. This is your jumping off place. You either jump off from here with me or else go back. With you? Willingly? Well, it couldn't be any other way. You see, I haven't had a chance to find out what you really want out of life. I know you're unhappy. You're like a woman with two minds who's only going one way. I wish it could be my way. It'd make me very happy. Whatever makes you think I could fit into your kind of life? Oh, I'd change all that. We'd go places. Sunny days, nights under the stars, drinking life like champagne, laughing at it. Must have been quite obvious the man was a criminal. Why did you introduce him as the Baron? You can't always be sure of people. Not since Mortimer, do you suppose anyone would have any doubt about my being the president? You will identify yourself, senor? Stand aside, this is the president. Why, oh, you must think again. The president has already crossed the frontier. Stupid idiot. Aren't you see for yourself? Look at me, ma'am. Look at me. Senor, you may be drunk, but you are still not the president. <laughs> I'll have him shot. You know I should be furious with you, but I must admit you have a charming way of making the most outrageous proposals. Why outrageous? Well, simply because our paths happen to cross one amusing evening. It doesn't mean we're meant to spend the rest of our lives together. But you did encourage me. Perhaps I did. Why? I wanted to make Charles jealous. It's just a woman's silly way of making a man know she loves him. If you don't understand, I'm sorry. Yes, I understand. I didn't think you'd take a mild flirtation so seriously. So you really love him? Yes, I really love him. Well, <laughs> that leaves no alternative but to retire gracefully from the scene of the crime. And as I never retire gracefully from the scene of any crime without leaving a souvenir, Tell him you go to stop the others as they go by. I nearly forgot something. Only second rate. Listen, I'm Senor Mortimer. Oh, yes. I am George Washington. Look here, my man. My name is Dillfellow. Ah, Senor Dillfellow. I remember, the big businessman. Up! Oh, your chauffeur may proceed. Well, I'll be... It's a lovely night for a drive, sir. You're disgustingly cheerful, Joseph. Yes, I. I'm feeling very happy. I'm working for a gent who never makes mistakes. You know, when I saw you coming out of Amigas alone, I could have jumped for joy, sir. There was really good sense. No, no, that was Mrs. Mortimer's good sense. Well, you ought to be able to settle down for life on your share of this. You thinking of retiring, sir? Not if I can help it.
Joseph, look. Yes. Do you mean that we've been robbed? Yes, Joseph. You've got the beautiful diamond, of course. At least that's worth a packet. No, Joseph. Do you mean to, do you mean to say that you've given it back? Yes, Joseph. Well, I'm sorry, son. I'm quitting. Haven't I always warned you about that sort of thing? <sighs> Never mind, Joseph. You'll get over it. <laughs> Anyhow, we've done Mortimer a bit of good. Stop! Stop, my senor! One moment! One moment! What is this? Another hold-up? Inside, there is a senora. She waits for senor Mortimer. Uh, she's alone. That's Terry. Here, wait. You can't do this. What about the brother? Oh, never mind. Chase him yourself. This is important. No, no, no. Hi, hi you. Here. Gosh, I was worried about you. Were you? Yes, are you all right? Well, yes. Oh, so he gave it back. Yes. It's funny. I didn't figure he was that kind of a guy. He's given you back, too. No, he couldn't do that. Because I was never stolen. But I don't understand it. It, it just doesn't make sense. You know, we, we lose what we neglect. Well, after you'd gone, I realized it. I guess I needed this. I think we both needed it. It was because you would carry on. Where Dad left off? Mm. Oh, it's all going to be different now. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go on a vacation, a real vacation. No telephones, no secretaries, and no bridge. Oh, Charles. <laughs> Look at your tie. <laughs> yes. Look at it. 